Welcome back to another My Lure Box video. In this video, I'm gonna take you fishing with me around these canals and hit a whole heap of different structure. I'm gonna show you the lures that I'm using, the retrieves, and how I like to fish these different areas. So, um, I'm just gonna keep the camera rolling. It'll go for about, I suppose, maybe 15 minutes or so, and hopefully it'll help you get onto a few more fish. Summer's in full swing, and um, we've had a pretty tough season because of the lack of rain up until this point but we just got dumped with about 250 mils in the last week or so. So it's really dirty conditions at the moment. Um, that's why I'm using like a really high contrast lure, but uh, it's just starting to clear up this, this last day or so. So as things start to clear up, I think the conditions are gonna come on and I reckon we might see some of the best jack fishing we've seen all season in these canals after this rain clears and um, we get a good flush out. I think things are gonna turn on. So hopefully this, this video comes in at the right sort of timing for you. So if we're gonna talk about these rock walls, the way that I like to fish them generally is with a deep diving lure and I've got like a three meter jackal squirrel on. Um, other lures that you might wanna use, there's you know things like Smith's Cherry Bloods, TMCO Sumaris, but in, you know, in dirty conditions, something like that with a really dark, deep profile, deep diving bib is the way to go. And then as it clears up, super clear conditions, stuff like that, especially this time of year, like a little prawn imitation. After these big rains, the prawn imitations, I think are gonna be the way to go. So the way that I like to fish these areas, you might be able to pick it up. I'm not sure if you can see it, but we've got a run out tide this afternoon, perfect. And off these rock walls as it's coming around, there's there's a section right here where it's sort of just peeling out and it's a great spot for these jacks, even Trevally, to sit and park up and get ready for the bait to come through. So the really, you can see really aggressive retrieve with little stalls. That's the way that I like to fish it. And you're really trying to just sit a suspending lure down in the face of these fish. So you can kind of crank it down and then once you get it there, just move it around like a bait fish, scared, disoriented, trying to get out of the way. But it's on that stall where generally you're gonna get hit by the big jack. And that's why you need it. Oh, I just got hit then. That's why you need a deep diving lure to sit down deep at the bottom here. And there's areas through here where the rock meets the mud and the sand. That's where you wanna get your lure. It's usually about two meters down. If you go with a shallow diving lure, late afternoon, you're a little bit more likely to get on a trevally that way. Um, the jacks tend to sit a little bit lower and that's just sort of a good way of getting out of it and not, and not sort of getting as many trevs is to try and get straight down and then a twitchy retrieve down there. The trevs will get excited by a really quick straight retrieve back to your boat or tink, tink, tink as you're moving it. The stalling tends to get rid of a lot of the bycatch. You still get cod and stuff, but yeah, this is the way that I like to fish it. And you can see I'm bringing it back with the tide. So the fish are sort of peering in, they're looking up in upstream, that's how they're sitting. And anything that comes past, they're kind of looking at it and, and getting ready to grab it. Especially late afternoon when the tide's moving like this. Now the other option as you get sort of later into the afternoon, definitely later on in summer too, like February, March, April, Something like, what have I got here? Something like that little popper, like a G-Splash. Something like that this time of year is really effective as well along these rocky points and rock walls, the retaining walls. Um, it's a really good way to get after them once this sun gets a little bit lower. And an aggressive stalling retrieve, the same kind of thing, right in hard against this, this rock is the way to go for these big jacks. So I'm not fishing really all the way out to the boat. I'm sort of fishing the first metre and a half down, like in depth, and then just stalling it. And once I get it down there, and I've given it a bit of time down there in the strike zone, if I don't get anything, just sort of rod tip lift it, so it's like a bait fish getting away, and then I'll just rip it back in and fire it back in again. And obviously these bends, like the top points or little peninsulas are the way to go. If you can get those because of the bait traffic, it's like a it's like a high traffic zone that all the bait has to move past. But something like this here, if you can see this 
don't know if you can see that tree there, that overhanging tree, if there's shadows under there, perfect little spot for some bait to sit. And really what you're looking for is any sort of, you know, skipping prawns, jellyfish spraying, um, splashed up wet rocks, any of that is an indication, like even there, there's little sort of jelly prawns spraying out as I'm bringing it in and throwing it and landing it in the bank there. Um, that's all really good signs that there's stuff happening. And most of the time I'm throwing way up ahead of the, ahead of the boat. So if, you, if you're in nice and close against these banks, you want to be getting your cast way up away from where you are because your presence up against the rock tends to spook the bait and the jacks up ahead, if the bait's sort of shooting up along that bank, they, they'll tweak on that there's something not right. So I either, I either long cast along the bank and get as far away as I can from the boat or I sit out and sort of cast a little bit in front of the boat like this and then bring it down the batter of the rock. So you're really looking for any sort of deviation in the rock wall. Now you can see it's a really big flat long face. The jacks still get along there, but it's not as, it's not as um, effective as some of those points, areas where there's overhanging trees and things like that. You're more likely to get sort of trevally or flathead sitting along a section of bank like this or brim, that sort of stuff. So um, what I might do, I'm coming up to a couple of pontoons and like little dry docks and things. So I might switch up and take you through how I like to fish those. Well, I was just using like my 8 to 10 kilo 5 foot 6 bait casting rod. It's a 200 size Corrado with 20, 20, like 20 pound leader, 20 pound braid. And the leader's about oh, a metre and a half, just a little bit longer than a rod length. So it doesn't go into the, into the little um, runner there, the little worm where the line comes onto the spool. So it doesn't get in there and out of there to work away at the FG knot. It just sits about there when I'm ready to cast. All right. Now this is probably the most effective at the moment I would say for chasing those really big mangrove jack is to go and fish these big heavy structures like these pontoons, barbecue boats, dry docks, things like that. And uh, if you haven't seen monster jacks, my, uh, I think it was my second DVD, uh, that goes through in, in real detail how to fish soft plastics, diving lures around a lot of these pontoons and barbecue boats and I'll get onto some giants in that. If you haven't seen that, make sure you check that out. Um, you can get it as a download. But what I'll do, I'll take you through some of the basics. So this is what I'm using. This is just one option, um, which is just like a four inch paddle tail with like a three eighth ounce, ounce head or a half ounce. And you can see the way I've rigged it there with a double on the back. And you can use like a 3.0 to a 5.0 hook size. That's a Z-Man diesel minnows. Um, the other option is, you know, something a lot bigger, which during these really dirty conditions, a really big presence bait like that, um, you know, five inch, even six inch big paddle tails or real thumping vibe lures, running these along the edge of pontoons can be effective as well. You can see that I've got that rigged up with pretty heavy gear, like that's 40 pound. So um, let me show you how I like to pick these pontoons apart and how I like to retrieve the lures. Oh, I've also got a little skipping plastic as well and I might show you how, how I use that around these areas too. So firstly, this is just like a 2500 size reel and I've got fairly smooth drag on that. It's not a real high end reel but 2500 size and a smooth drag on like a, what is this, this is a um, trophy hunter, it's like a seven foot trophy hunter. And the, the longer length rod just gives you that chance to be able to get leverage on the fish once you hook up. And the way that I like to fish these is, let me show you, this is actually the, so you wanna fish the long face, I generally try and fish that first, but, 
you can get a cast down along that front side and bring it back and, it, and your lure's going underneath the pontoon or the dock, that's a really effective way to go as well. So you can see here, like it's gonna be made a little bit difficult because there's a big palm front here and that's the sort of stuff you've got to deal with all the time. Um, yeah, it's just the nature of it. There'll be, you know, crab pots and, and lines and things like that that make it really difficult. But really what you need to be doing is getting within 10 centimetres or less of the, of the dock because the jacks that are under there are sitting tight and they won't move far for a bait. You're literally any more than sort of 10 centimetres away from the dock as it runs by at the lure, you're wasting your time. So this is a bit more realistic of what you'll generally find with these pontoons. Take a look at this. A lot of it has to do with your boat positioning. And I'll cast my lure right down past the pontoon and then try and reach out and bring my lure right beside the pontoon, like literally punching and nosing right in beside it. And I'll generally run two along that side and then as I drift in, just pop one in right beside the big pylon that's holding it and drag it down just beside it. And that's pretty much all I'm doing. And just repeating that as often as possible, getting as many casts at as many pontoons as I can. A lot of the time the jacks sit on those back poles. So a sneaky one around the back before you get spotted. Like now that I'm here, if there's a jack sitting there ready to go, he's gonna be spooked and he's gone. So you kind of need to sneak in and be cheeky with your casting and getting it around. So you, you're trying to catch these jack before they're really sure that you're there. somewhere like this a huge boat just doubles and triples the size of the of the cover that the fish have got so they're fantastic you just got to be real careful with how you're throwing around them you don't want to be hitting anyone's big boats with your with your lead weight it's just yeah it's going to start an argument so you just got to cautiously get about and do it um, but you can see me like i'm constantly on the on the electric just trying to reposition the boat So I can get that perfect calf really tight right up along the edge and then have a look at this retrieve it's like a pretty quick burning retrieve and it's out of there within like five seconds I'm not sitting it in there twitching it carrying on like that I'm just getting it in there burning it back looking for a crazy reaction bite from one of these jacks that's how they love it too they don't really want you twitching it and stalling it they just want it in their face it's getting away they hone in on that thumping tail and bang they want to hit it I tend to not really fish these too much. It's rare that I'll get something off a, a sand bank with those little pylons. I tend to just skip past them. So hopefully that gives you some insight into how to fish it. I just run fluorocarbon right through the whole way so there's no leader sort of length and there's no knot there. Because a lot of the time if you're running along the edge of pontoons, you, even your little knot will just catch and that's the end of your retrieve and you're stuck and you've got to unpin it. So. A lot of the time as well, not this week, but a lot of the time these canals are super clear. So fluorocarbon for me is the way to go. It's abrasion resistant and it just allows you to have a little bit more insurance when you hook that jack and it starts rubbing you up and down that pontoon or your heart's in your mouth and your line's screaming. Um, gives you an extra, extra chance. So if you've got any questions on that, I'd love to hear your comments or your questions. Make sure you put it in the section below. And um, if I can't get back to you, there's someone else on this channel that will. The engagement on this channel has been fantastic the last few uh, months now. So yeah, there's a lot of advice and a lot of support and help now happening on this channel. So if you've got a question, put it in the section below. Um, all right, the other thing that we might do, I didn't show you the skip casting actually, but essentially what, what you're trying to do with the skip casting is um, if you've followed my channel now for any length of time you'll you'll know that skip casting is probably my favorite way of chasing mangrove jack and the way that i like to do it if you haven't seen it you make sure you check out skip casting for mangrove jack the videos that i've got there it's heaps of fun and super effective um, but essentially what you're trying to do when you're skipping around docks 
is getting your lure into into pockets where they haven't been seen yet. And so that really means getting it around the back of those pylons, in underneath some of the wiring and things like that, and um, presenting your presenting your paddling sort of four or five inch plastic, presenting that right around the back. And and often the jacks are a lot more confident to take something like a bait that's sitting in behind the dock, because it's a much more realistic place for a for a uh, bait fish to be scurrying out of because it's um, it's just so shallow in there, that's where the bait wants to sit. So that skip casting is just like flinging it in on the surface, underneath things, in between the docks and things like that. It's nasty stuff. It takes a lot of practice, but it's heaps of fun. And I just use the same sort of 20 pound setup with a little, a much lighter, softer rod to load up for skipping. So make sure you check out those other videos if you haven't seen that. But um, I'm sort of getting itchy to properly fish and, and get stuck into it now and try and get after it, fish the sarve. So we'll go through this little um, this little section here, how to fish these these bridges. And hopefully with that you'll have rock walls, pontoons and bridges. And um, it should give you a few things to think about or try next time you're on the water. Um, I think I've done a couple of videos on bridges, but it was when I was running a, a page called The Jack Guide that's up. So um, I'm not sure if I've got stuff on bridges for jacks on, on my lure box, but I'll take you through it anyway. So really what you want to be doing, these ones that have got the rocks along the edges are just fantastic because there's jacks sitting on the rock batter and there's jacks sitting out in between these pylons. And it's crazy stupid fishing doing this but what you want to be doing is throwing it in between the pylons and bringing it down real deep and then stalling it in between the pylons and you basically go along and you hammer absolutely everything you can so you're trying to split it's like firing a shot it's like afl goals you're trying to split it constantly and then stall it in and around those pylons and i, I only run 20 pound line um, but you probably you want to be thinking maybe 40 because it's all you can see the barnacles along the base of these things and down deep it's even worse um, you want your drag super heavy you'll see me constantly checking my drag and having it tweaked right to its end point because uh, when you get hit it's game on so you've really got to go for glory shots like every time it's in between bring it down stall it right at the base of those pylons and a three meter diving lure is ideal, three or four, you know. And it's also about stealth, so ideally you'd be in here super quiet and just drifting with the tide, not motoring about and carrying on, bumping around on the pines. You just try and drift in and then you come back up really if you can help it. Or if I was downstream and heading up, I'd be real cruisy. I wouldn't be like jumping around through the bridge the whole time. And when you can, when you've got an opening to get in at the rocks, that's how I'll do it. And, and often the schools of jack will sit in between. So you, you kind of, you might have the big resonant fish down in the middle, but often the little, the four or five set of like smaller jacks, they just sort of sit off to the side a little bit. And you'll get them as you drag it down the batter with lots of little stalls. Now remember like the best pylons, are the first and last one and in a situation like this it's probably the last one you've got the tide running this way it's that last pylon that's got the least sort of turbulence for them to be really having to work hard to sit in and there's a deep hole at the back of these pylons as well where the sand's been sort of washed out over time and that's where the jacks sit right down the bottom so you kind of want to throw your lure in bring it in from behind feeling that pylon now, eh? you want to be feeling it. And all of that tinkity tink 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 down by the pylons, that's ringing the jack bell. That's, that's them like, they're going to be tuning into any sound that's down there, whether it's your lure going with the vibe of its, of its bib, or the rattle inside some of these lures, or your line tinking on the barnacles as it sort of flirts along the side of it. That's all good stuff, so that's what you want. And I mean, I've sort of hurried through this, to be honest with you. A bridge, I tend to spend about 20 minutes at. 
a, a bridge like this where you've got eight pylons either side, yeah, you sort of like 20 minutes. Um, if you come through and you do it in, in three, four minutes, I think you're sort of selling yourself short a little bit. Sometimes they might need a little bit of encouragement or they miss it the first time. And yeah, if there's a bridge, there's a jack. They're here. You've just got to try and give them the time. Um, see, the other, the other little cheeky thing as well, jacks will sit at the very next pontoon. They'll sort of go over and that, they'll park in there as like a holding point and they might come and grab bait here when it's here and then go and sit back at those near pontoons. So don't discount, even though it's all sandy, if you can see that, full sandy pontoon. I've done videos on that pontoon. There's jacks that sit in there. Um, and the other one too, like, it's, the, it's anything, it makes a lot of sense. It's the rock bar that comes around the edge where, you know, generally the bridges are at these entrances to lakes. These rock bars, are perfect for a jack and for bait to be coming around as well. So, anyway, I hope that's really helpful. I hope it helps you get it, get yourself going, get some confidence going to chase a couple of these jacks this season before it's too late. Been sort of late January now. I've been watching your uh, videos, mate. <laughs> <laughs> mate, I just saw, heard these. I was here this morning. And oh, I yeah? got a fifty-centimeter jack. Just here. You beauty. Good boy. Yeah, unbelievable. On that rod. Oh, you are kidding. Yeah. Mate, I, do you know what's so funny? I just heard, I heard, is it William, is it? William. I heard William coming through the sticks, and I was like, oh my God, that's me 30 years ago. Just frothing, eh? I used to jump off this bridge as a kid. I wouldn't do it now. Right. There's people dragging kids behind boats out there today, and I'm going shark fishing tonight. Crazy. Just to the same spot. Crazy. <laughs> you got your timing, right? Little, little, uh, trevally. Yep. A lot of trevally. Yeah. I've seen them busting along there. I've yeah, lost a couple. They push, it, they push the bait against the rocks. Yeah. So it's on, it's on there coming in now? Uh, it, it's probably turning, yeah. Yeah. Checking his drag, mate. What a gun. Frothing. That's it, lad, in against the rocks. That's where you want them. Mate, that's so funny. You pass that? Yeah, that's me, yeah. Here they come, look at them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well. It was a nice, it was a nice so I got a, got a couple of photos of it and let it go. Oh, brilliant. On that rod, man. Yeah, it's up, mate. Wow, so you pulled on a 50 that. out of here. That. That's brilliant. Is he your biggest jack buddy? Good boy. Hey? Yeah. Wow. Oh well. Right time of the day, I'll let you get into it. Yeah, you too. Enjoy your, enjoy your afternoon. Yeah. See if we can get one in the water. Where you fishing? Where are you fishing? Well, I'm, I'm going to head out. Yeah. All right, good luck, guys. All right, well, hopefully that gives you some pointers for next time you're out on the water. If you've got any questions, make sure you put it in the comments below. And um, I'm enjoying reading all the comments at the moment, getting back to just about everything as I can. Um, yeah, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.